Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards our star. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order, so I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacomi? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world, instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... That's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacone Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad, but... Why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is... eerily quiet. No audience. No staff. No one around. Even if we're late, a grand theater like this shouldn't be completely empty. Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone.
gosh, the atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. Something feels off. We're in the right place, right? There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. <sighs> you scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the Eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the Dusk Wars, darkness veiled the sky and chaos consumed the Earth. And the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. They gathered nebulae and forged them into pigs thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Pentagoni's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions. But now it looks like I'll be back behind bars again. I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Panacone was still a frontier prison. Thank you. 
67 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. Legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. The three nameless stayed on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. I hope you like this land of freedom, the scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. Amidst a raging war, the Frontier Prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Penacony was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too... literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! These puppets... Where are they guiding us this time? They transmuted straight. 
streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the third and fourth days. The ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree, grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. Peace never truly graced land of the exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate, so please, allow me to present it in allegorical form. Land of the Exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. The Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. My child, you did not serve the old master. The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. to land of the exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages, did Panacone earn its new name, the Land of the Dream. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigators. Uh, you want us to help you? What do you need? I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penicone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me, don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express. 
if you read between the lines. The harmony changed Penacony just as the guards once did. Looks like we've gotta help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit, right? My master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing? It's my right to assume control of his dominion. My former master has long departed. But why do I still fear the remnants of his creation? Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. and embrace one another. Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. Alas, 
they remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the Land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven... beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. Planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody, and the canon of law dictated the form. Thus, all mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. This guy is really into these puppets. here is completely different from the previous two scenes. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Peniconi, hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. And now, I shall reveal its future to you. Kick off 
a short story and have a fight here just like we did in the previous acts? Why aren't any of these puppets saying anything? Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final rite. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. I weep for the departed. It is so far. Stand still. A quick divination. All things in the human's creation. Still tidings manifest. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Uh, still water for the <laughs> scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event, the Charmony Festival. Perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. The seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberate. Oh, 
everything related to the Order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacone Theater, the very core of the Sweet Dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival, and the very place where the future of Penacone shall be determined through conflict. Your unwavering faith in the Trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness, especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that! They would just be toys for the Eon! <sighs> it seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon, or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from Eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? May as well kill them all. <laughs> I weep for the departed. It did so far. We came together. I'm going to and awaken. What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. No matter. Memories are beneath the water. Lies an endless abyss. Say bye to breathing. That's half the work. Still water to uplift. Relax. <laughs> 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 
May as well kill him. Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Destiny isn't chosen. Ah. Uh. Stand still. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Things in this genius creation. Come <laughs> and gain. <laughs> Ill fate is said. Say bye to breathing.
Allow me to make it converge and awaken! Didn't hurt. Did you come here of your own volition? Or was it fate? Relax. What would you like to know this time? <laughs> <laughs> Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods! <clears throat> Done, huh? Radiant spirits, heed my word! Show no mercy!